Welcome back to Vintage View headquarters in Denver, Colorado. We are here for part two of our Wine Cellar 101 covering um, the idea of active sellers versus passive sellers. Now, in the first episode, we, uh, we brought on Dave Elliott, our VP of uh, Innovation and Design and Seasoned Seller Expert. And we bestowed him the, uh, the title of Two Buck Chuck Man. So with that, I'm gonna pour this fabulous wine. That means he's getting a passive wine cellar. And for those of you who don't know, Two Buck Chuck is the infamous $2 bottle of wine that I think is now $2.99 at Trader Joe's. That's going up in value, that's good. Yeah, so cheers. cheers. I'm just not going to provide a comment on that one. I will. Maybe I should consider a little more expensive. Whoa, whoa, whoa. we'll cover all <laughs> what we're doing there. So really, the reason we gave him two buck chuck is he's a Tuesday night pizza wine drinker. He goes and picks up a decent bottle, drinks it within a couple days. It might be ten bucks, it might be fifteen bucks, but he's not doing long term storage. Um, and if I remember correctly, you have uh, roommates, dogs, all these other things, and no room for a wine cellar. No room, and probably just a little too much going on to have yeah. something that nice looking. Yeah. <laughs> so a passive wine cellar is a great opportunity for people who want to display their bottles, store some for the short term, and you know, they don't want to get too, too serious about what they're doing. So what does that mean? That means you still have to be smart, right? Yeah, absolutely. So what are the things that kill a bottle of wine quickly? So things that are gonna kill the bottle of wine, and one of the reasons I don't do it, is a lot of activity, vibration, noise that can move the mm -hmm. bottle, shake it up a little bit. Sunlight, as I told you in the last episode, um, the one spot that is ideal for me has a window to the outside. Yeah. So I have to consider what I'm gonna do with that, if yeah. I'm gonna do a- Yeah, so sunlight, sunlight, vibration, heat. Right. Wine likes to mellow, even cheap wine. If you shake this thing up and stick it in the sunlight, it's going to not taste good. I don't think it tastes that great it's, right now. It's not, gonna, it's not going to taste better than it does now, <laughs> for fair. sure. So um, when we tell people, when we talk to people about what, how, to, how to do a passive seller correctly, you got to avoid those things. The, the, the anecdote that I use a lot is if you've ever been to that, um, at, that old school Italian restaurant and they pull the bottle of wine from the top of the fridge, and then when they pour it, it tastes like garbage. It's because it because it is <laughs> appliances give off heat. So when you're when you're putting up a wine wall, and you're not talking long term storage, you still want to be smart. So you keep yep. it away from your uh, your appliances, heat vents, yep. um, direct sunlight, highly active areas, highly active areas. Yep. Um, really anything that can bring in these other um, elements that are just going to cook a wine prematurely. Now. It doesn't mean you can't put a nice bottle there, right? You just, if, you, if you think about these things smartly, then you can actually yeah, store for a year, two, three, three years, et Absolutely. Cetera. Nice bottles are going to obviously last longer than a less expensive yeah. bottle. Um, it doesn't have to actually be an active one, depending on really the length of how yeah. long you want to store it. And so. in, the, in part three of this, we'll get into a little bit about why long-term storage needs certain types of elements to be considered. Um, but one other, uh, one other rule of thumb I do too is uh, if you're talking about a wine wall or a display, put your hand on the wall. Does the wall feel warm? If it does, it's getting heat from somewhere. Right, <laughs> right? If, if it's warm, it's obviously hot. Yeah, there, if, there's if, heat, it's cool, so. if it's cool to the touch and you test it out in several parts of the day, then you're actually probably you know, good okay. to store wine there. Yeah. Um, now, you don't love this wine, you told me such. You want to, now for those who I want, you want to get a little bit more serious with wine, we're building a, a wine room, it's passive, whatever. What are some things that we can do to um, get ready for cooling five, 10 years down the line if, if, you, so, if you want to play? If you want to. So it's important to realize that when you're building a wine cellar, yeah, you can throw racks on a wall and it's gonna work, it's gonna store your wine just fine. But if you're actually building a space that you wanna grow into, you need to consider your insulation, whether there's a vapor barrier mm -hmm. or not, what kind of flooring you're putting in, what kind of walls you're putting yeah. in. The, again, the noise, the sunlight, yep. all that. So all that's very important. And there are several ways to find that information out yep. um, to see what you need to do. I always would suggest that if you plan on having any kind of growth in your wine cellar, plan for cooling ahead. Doesn't mean you have yep. to put it in, but at least you don't have to tear it out when you're ready. Yeah, and the expensive part of cooling a cellar is the cooling unit. 
plywood is cheap, vapor barrier, right. relatively speaking, cheap, and all these other things are not terribly expensive. And down the line, you don't have to rip the walls out if exactly. you've already planned. So we'll, we'll link up some resources to how to do this better. Um, but for now, let's uh, let's slug down our uh, two buck chuck, and uh, we'll get ready for the next episode to open a little bit nicer bottle and talk about the the fancy side of things. The the cooled active seller. The bougie side. The bougie. I'm the bougie one, apparently.